Hello, I am the Tulsa Astro Geek. Today I'm going to show you two of my favorite mobile planetarium apps, Starwalk 2 and Stellarium. They are both available in both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And Stellarium is also available on desktop for both. I will put links for uh, downloading both apps and all the platforms in the description. I am starting in Stellarium. It is my favorite planetarium app for most things. Um, there are one or two things that I do prefer in Starwalk 2, and I'll show you those in a moment. As with any planetarium apps, they'll show you exactly what the sky looks like from your location right now. In fact, uh, you can see there are some Satellite is passing over me right now. In addition to seeing what the sky looks like right now, uh, you can in fact see what it looks like at any time. In Stellarium, you do it by uh, tapping the screen and tapping the time. You simply drag the dot to move the sky forward or back in time. The light shaded areas of the bar are daylight, the dark areas are nighttime, and the clock icon will return to the present. To look at different parts of the sky, simply drag the, your finger on the screen. Uh, you can pinch to zoom to zoom in on anything that may be interesting. You can tap items to get uh, more information. So that is the star Fomalhaut. It is a double star. You can keep tapping to get uh, more detailed information, including a uh, Wikipedia summary. You can adjust the view so you can turn the grid lines on or off, show or hide the constellations, add or remove the landscape. You can turn on night mode. Um, that's very useful for using the app outside at night uh, so you won't ruin your dark vision. One uh, really cool feature is that if you tap the compass, you can actually turn it into a kind of augmented reality mode where it will automatically show whatever your phone is looking at. So I've entered the mode right now and it's difficult to convey in the screen capture, but I'm not touching and dragging the screen. I'm simply moving my phone around and it is adjusting based on where my phone is pointed. So that is a great way to look out, you know, say you're not sure what the blue bright star is, you look at it, oh, it's Jupiter, it's a planet, it's not a star. Um, or it helps you identify constellations. Um, just a really cool feature and a great way to help you explore the sky. Uh, you can also use the search and browse features to learn more about the sky um, and search for things. So if you know, say you want to know where Andromeda is, you can start typing it in, grab it, and it'll help you find it. Uh, you can also browse for items. So you can search for planets, stars, or deep sky objects, as well as satellites and other things. Uh, if you go into deep sky objects, you can browse all of them or filter by type and to go into all deep sky objects. And this gives you a lot of really useful information for each object at a glance. So what it will do is it's basically a list of all of the major objects in its catalog. If an item is completely grayed out like this, um, it's not visible, and it'll say so. Otherwise, it'll tell you uh, what time of day that object is visible. And if you tap on it, it will guide you to that object. Um, so this is still in the augmented mode. So it's telling me I need to actually 
point my camera higher uh, until I'm pointing at it. So that will actually help you see exactly where it is in the sky uh, if you don't know. And that is really cool. My other favorite planetarium app is Skywalk 2. Um, it has many of the same features as uh, Stellarium. Um, you see it really has beautiful graphics, very crisp and sharp. Uh, you can, you know, move around, zoom in, different things. It's very cool. One of the things I really like about Starwalk 2 is that in its uh, list of objects, it not only shows you what times the object is visible uh, today, it shows you its current elevation above the horizon. Uh, that is really useful for planning, um, say, you know, your actual photography sessions and helping you figure out what to take a picture of. Uh, when you're doing actual photography and even visual astronomy, you want to be looking at things that are uh, usually at least 30, 30 to 40 degrees above the horizon. A, so you're not looking through so much of the Earth's atmosphere, and usually the higher an object is, the less light pollution you're dealing with to either view it or photograph it. Uh, so that is helpful for, you know, quickly filtering uh, things to look at. Also, it's also really nice that in this list it shows you a thumbnail of whatever the object is so that if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can quickly see if it's something that uh, you might be interested in getting a picture of. You can also tap any of these items to uh, see where it is in the sky right now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe.